Hey guys, Solo Not One here in Philadelphia with one more wreath video before we head into the holidays. Um, I am going to be doing a natural and dried materials wreath. Um, I'm going to use grape rind to make a sort of wild but round wreath shape. I have my favorite juniper and I have an assortment of dried floral in kind of smoky purple and reds. So, um, we're just going to jump into it and make something pretty. It's for a longtime friend who uh, doesn't have space in her apartment for a Christmas tree. So I always make her some kind of interesting wreath so she can have a little holiday spirit hanging on the wall instead of taking up floor space. So let's start. So um, there are grapevine forms, wreath shapes available, but this is actually a probably like half a bale of just coiled grapevine. And it might be a little big, but I do like the kind of spiral it's making. I have a hard time making small wreaths. So I don't want to cut too much material off, but I feel like this section here is too like straight and solid. So I'm going to flip it over and work on trimming that. And I think the key to keeping grapevine looking natural is to not cut like if I cut straight across it would just have like a really weird flat edge and we don't want that you want to keep it feeling asymmetrical but yeah there's just like a weird solid straight line there so Grapevine generally comes in about 100 foot coils, although good luck measuring it to see if you, <laughs> if that's what you actually got. Um, you're just gonna have to trust. It's super affordable. Oh, here's why we had this odd little straight piece. And if you would like to work with it and reshape it, I tend to usually leave it in the coil um, but if you want to stretch it out, the best way to do that is to soak it. Um, we have successfully, calendar reminder, we have successfully, we meaning me and my staff, over the years have successfully filled a giant 30 gallon trash can and soaked a whole bunch of it at once. The problem with that, I think we only did that once because we realized that <laughs> we were gonna have to figure out how to get the water out of the 30 gallon trash can after that. So I don't think we ever repeated that. <clears throat> most part this time of year it's pretty easy to just kind of use it from the coil just uh, tie my wire on here and you just need wire cutters clippers and uh, floral wire and this is 22 gauge so it's still pretty flexible and I do really often prefer paddle wire rather than the spool because you'll see this will fall over like 18 times while we're doing this and probably unravel. But my wholesaler that I get a lot of my floral supplies from does not seem to carry the paddles as readily as they carry the spool. And so I think I have a case of a dozen of these, so I'll be using it for a while. I'm not going to pull too tight at this point. I just want to like kind of start to anchor. 
And because we want to keep this really wild, I'm not going to go all the way around with the wire. I'll show you how we do that. And also this is interesting, so I'm going to go below it. I'm just trying to make a solid start. I am going to go around and wire, but um, I think that because I'm not using uh, tons and tons of assorted evergreen, I don't need to wire each individual piece. I'd like to get a few more. I'd like to get kind of use the juniper for the structure, and then I will kind of gently wire in between. All right. So I don't have a ton, but I do have this pretty uh, viburnum berry. I'm going to presume this is red tinted pompous grass. Um, baby's breath? Maybe? I think so. Just a dried red fountain grass. It definitely looks best when you keep it together in some little clumps. And I did it after doing the larger stuff, but now I'm really, because I was worried about breaking it and um, because it is so thin and wispy, but I'm realizing that I'm gonna have to do a little more work to tuck it where I want. So I still have a little more of this grass if I need it. Um, I have these kind of little bunny tails, but I don't think I want to go bright. I had saved this. This is the hydrangea from, this has been a very uh, reused, the items from this season's YouTube videos. Um, this is the hydrangea from my spray painted and dyed flower arrangement. These are not dyed um, and honestly can't say I thought about drying them. I just sort of put the design in a corner <laughs> and they looked really nice as they started to dry so I saved them. But I think, yeah, they look like they want to be here. And I also have <clears throat> these are just dried protea stamps. And I think we'll use those. Those look pretty and you can see it kind of pulls together a little bit of a pinky blushy rose. I'm gonna get these in and we'll finish it up with some ribbon. to tighten.
might as well use it all up because I'm probably not going to put it away neatly how, how it was left for me when, when it was found cleaned and organized. Um, the only other thing it needs is ribbon and a way for my friend to hang it. So I'm going to put a loop on it at whatever I deem the top. So my ribbon choices are this kind of red mesh. No, that's definitely a no. Or this is a dyed silk. That's basically the same color as the hydrangea. Or there is this, which I think we're going to go with this one. I, I, I struggle to use this one for wedding work because I think three, this section of the color is really beautiful, but this like charcoal black, they, they like dip dye the spool of ribbon. Um, the company is Hana Silk. I'm not sure if it's sold retail. Um, but I find this this black edge to be a little challenging to work with. But I think I think we'll try this one. Uh, so you definitely want to have ribbon only scissors. That is a very challenging thing to do when you're rushing and working quickly. Um, these are brand new, fresh, but they just there's nothing like a good pair of fabric scissors for cutting your ribbon. hydrangea is really fragile. But there we go. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me make a natural dried uh, wreath for a friend. I um, I'll be back with my next video, but then I will be taking um, some time off for the holidays. And then I will be back to kind of fill you guys in on what's next for my pretty new channel. Now that I have a few videos under my belt and I kind of see a direction that I want to move forward. So thank you again for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday and I will see you soon.